Hello, G-Man Division 4D. I am your recap of Chug Man Milk, and today I am joined by my co-host, Crepsulum. Hello. Uh, yes, I did play him again. <laughs> I played him this week. <laughs> I am introduced. Yeah, I, I know there's that everyone is like, oh, are you just going to bring the person you played this week on? The answer is maybe. Uh, well, no, because this next game week I'll have Helgen and he already got on the show. So this this time I'll bring in, I don't know, probably Riff Cannon. But uh, thanks for, for coming on the show, mate. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, without further ado, though, we'll go straight into it because we want to keep this sort of uh, concise. Uh, yep. We start off the first the first match of game week three was uh, GFR Joe's Full Throttle Rotters versus Tito's Samaji Severa. Uh, a 1-1. One, one. The Norse seem to be finding a lot of 1-1s, one, but to be honest, against a Nurgle team in its second season, despite how many kill skills there are on the, the Norse, Armour 7 I never fancy against such a strong team like Nurgle, and would you say this is a pretty decent result for the Norse? I think that they should be really happy with that result. Going up against Nurgle and Norse and AV7 is never easy. It you can, yeah. with a few unlucky rolls, you can have half your team in the injury box. And I'm looking at the sort of statistics, um, GFI Joe found a lot of KOs, which, you know, that really is the Norse experience. But T Cold gave it as good as he got it, and he killed quite a few rotters. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the teams afterwards, but uh, I believe the GFI Joe's titular rotter. GFI Joe has has left us unfortunately at the end of this game week. So uh, unfortunate for GFI Joe, but the result was good anyway. He'll be happy with that. Yeah. The, the next result will be uh, the two-one victory of Usarian Skaven versus Masterful's uh, Blood on the Sand, which is his Kemri team. Two-one, not really an unexpected result for Skaven versus Kemri, uh, I would say. No. The Skaven have the speed to, to run around Camry in general. So generally, generally the Camry lack against Skaven. Definitely, and um, looking at the statistics again, it looks like a very Camry versus Skaven game. The, the Skaven didn't manage to succeed in many blocks, but they did kind of, they, they did injure the Camry. They must have gotten the right picks when they need it. Yeah. Um, and less actually stuck for the the, for the Skaven than it did on the Kemri. The Kemri, although it inflicted a lot of KOs, it didn't really inflict as many injuries as the, uh, as the Rapscally no. wounds. But, but I'm still I'm, I'm quite decently impressed to the Skaven having uh, pretty much a double up on the blocks. Uh, sorry, I'm misreading. Sustained, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, that feels more into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's more appropriate. But, yeah. Uh, you know, as we sort of always said at the beginning of the recap, Usarian's team was really busted at the beginning of like the entirety of, um, not even just the, this division, but before in, in the open debate invitational. So that would be a great result for him, and he'd probably be happy that he's now gaining some good traction for the rest of the season. Mm. Uh, the next game was uh, Blood Horse, that is Rift Cannon's uh, Chorfs versus Helgen's Nurgle. Unfortunately, this game was a admin decision, I believe. One nil. Ah. Um, this is this has just happened today. So while we can expect Merkworth Athletic and the Third Guardians to actually play their game, I think they, they, we can't talk about this game because it didn't happen. <laughs> by I think they are scheduled tonight, actually. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll cover um, the Pro Elves versus the Lizardmen at the beginning of next week's recap uh, but we also can't really cover unfortunately Charles versus Nurgle but I'm sure both will be happy that with a, you know two teams of Claw Mighty Blow in the mix neither of them had to actually suffer any injuries there uh, but talking about the next game we have yeah. the other necromantic team in the division not yours uh, this is Matias versus Gonna side some big Seaguard, which is a really high flying elf team. And they won 2 0. Yeah, Matthias, he suffered quite a lot last week. 
And it's gonna take a couple of weeks to gain momentum again for him. Yeah, he lost his his edge wolf while you know, yeah. he's still going strong. That's definitely a massive hit to him because his team isn't as, in my opinion, well built as yours in certain areas. Nice. And that's really kind of hurt him compared to how amazing certain positionals on that high elf team are. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, looking... Now we're going to take a, a deeper look uh, on the team later on, but taking a quick look at Matthias without any blocks on the golems and one uh, wolf with no block it's really tough yeah, you can yeah. lots of chance rolls which and, can go bad and, and if we look at the statistics as well it's another it's another case like the, the Skaven game where um the norse in terms of blocks succeeded almost doubled the block succeeded compared mm. to the high elves but once again, the High Elves gave it as good as they got in terms of injuries and KOs, so it wasn't like those blocks all turned into injuries and it was disproportionately um, no. affecting the High Elves. It was a very equal game in that respect, but in many ways that's bad for the Norse because the High Elves not only, I think, have a pretty full team, but because of their, their, their edge and their, their movement, don't really mind going down players. Well, exactly. The they, they, they can still play with just a handful of players left on the field. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Next door. And the Necro for me always feels like a team where if you lose a position or two, it really just hurts you because an Elf Linesman is still worth its weight in gold. A zombie, yeah. not so much. No, exactly. But we have the next game, which was also a Necro game. <laughs> this was your game versus me, and... Uh, yeah, we are going to talk about it a bit more in depth because we know what happened in this game, both of us, because we, <laughs> we both casted it, we both played in it. Yeah. Um, it was a bit of a mental one. Uh, in, in my offense, it all kind of fell apart. I went way too bunched up. Uh, you managed to sort of really collapse in on me. And mm. then uh, you got the ball with your, your movement as Wolf. But the heroics of a single, <laughs> a single Wrestle Goblin managed to roll Pal uh, both down, and that was enough to stall it out, so it ended up just going nil-nil, and then and then things went bad for, you, for <laughs> the poor Necro. Uh, I will, can remember the second half went quite bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I believe it was a blitz. I think a blitz happened for one touchdown. It might have been the second one. Yeah, wasn't this the game where I had like three blitzes against me or something like that? Um, Could have maybe, been. No, maybe. sorry, no. That was my uh, clan game okay. early on this oh, week. Oh yeah, clan. Now, now, clan's a whole different story altogether. Yeah. Because that was that was. I was also dicing someone in clan. <laughs> I had a guy. The guy I played in clan this week rolled at you know two sets of. Well, they weren't quads goals because they were both downs mixing it, but it was essentially like quads goals. Um, and they just killed off a game for him. But yeah, this, this was a, a bit of a, a mad one. Uh, I managed to get away with my first half performance, and then the second half was just a game of like. of, of complete madness. Um, <laughs> but it's a 2 0 loss for you. I'm happy with my 1 0 because. I'm happy with my 2 0 because, frankly, after the first game week where I was going to go 2 0 up against the Kemri and then end up losing 2 1 because of a tripwire snake eyes on the line, <laughs> I don't mind winning because of an uphill on, with a goblin on a, on a, on a werewolf. Um, I'm, mostly, I'm mostly happy that there were, uh, I think I lost a ghoul, but other than that, I actually managed to gain block on my fresh wolf. And on a golem as well, which re I really needed. So yeah. I'm quite decently happy with that outcome, at least. I got something from the game. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, Underworld's always a scary prospect because of that claw mighty blow piling on. And I'm glad mm. I didn't do any damage. In fact, the ghoul damaged itself, which is, which is the yeah. unfortunate part. Yeah, that's typically how I hurt my wolves. <laughs> 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 I failed GFI <laughs> and killed the wolf. Well, that's, what happened. that's what happened to the killer, um, my killer last last season against Orcs. He was like, okay, I can get one die sack on the carrier. 
double fells dodge M and G against uh, against Chaucer <laughs> next week. I just lose that game as well. Like oh god, horrible season. Um, but our, our next game and our, our last game we can cover because the other one hasn't been played yet is the Dark Elves no. versus the Halflings. It's a three-one victory for the Dark Elves. Uh, the assassin got the them. MVP. <laughs> yeah, brilliant game, I'm sure. A brilliant game for the Dark Elves. Uh, what's amazing though is that the Dark Elves actually have less blocks succeeded than the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They got out bashed in a sense by the halflings, even if the injuries and chaos don't tell the same story. Um, and I'm just glad. I'm, I'm sure that Bungie Man will be happy at least that he managed to play that entire game with both of his trees and his edge, <laughs> his edge fling compared to last week although last week he did only lose one nil um so my my advice for bungee man is don't play with any trees or don't play with any like rusted trees just fire them and your inducements will carry you uh through the day but uh yeah that's the game week uh as we as we say pro elves and lizards we cover at the beginning of next week before we touch anything else but uh, nothing too shocking here. No. The, uh, most of the games went... I, I think the the biggest upset, to be honest, is... Uh, is our game, I, I, I would probably uh, say. Yeah, partially, but uh, T-Cold and his Norse as well. That's uh, true. I think that's, that's, that's uh, true. a win-win against uh, the Nurgle. That, that's quite a decent accomplishment. I would say so. T Cold's really finding his like groove with this Norse team, and um, mm. I, I did predict it might be a bit of a dark horse. And we won't look at the leaderboards until about game week five, I think, because it's just not worth looking at mm. such a fresh division. But uh, he picks up a win or two in the next game week, and he could really be up there. Yeah. Uh, so we'll cover now the teams uh, and how they've developed. There are a few teams that haven't had anything. But we'll just ignore them when we come to them. But we'll mm. start with your team, who definitely has picked up something. And you've picked up a level on the Flesh Golem. And yep. you've picked up Block on the Werewolf. Considering this team's biggest issue for me in the last game weeks was, you'd have, like, each one of the, one of the positionals, like, you had a really amazing White, a really amazing Werewolf. Mm. Um, the fact is now you have that other Werewolf on sort of... Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's coming up, he's... he's got his skills that flesh golden is now really developed of course the second one needs a little bit of development and work on it but with also that white with just mighty blow just an injury away how yeah. how confident do you feel the team right now uh well much better than after game week two where i lost three three guys amongst one god golem and a guard zombie uh, that that hurt me quite a lot. So yeah, now I feel like I'm picking up. Uh, next game is gonna be against uh, Matthias and his necros. So we have a mirror match next week. Yeah. And I have, yeah. I think I have a possibility to pick up on some additional SPs there. I don't think I'm facing any of the big, uh, big uh, bad teams. For a couple of weeks now either so i think i have a good prospect of rebuilding the team and get things in order and get the svps on the correct places Fantastic. of course one focus is going to be to get uh number 13 stigmata to to get the piling on because i feel I, i'm lacking that at the moment yeah um we will we will come to this prediction when we like talk about the matchup for game week four. Mm. We're gonna look at Matty's team briefly, even though he hasn't got anything new. Um, but if we look at his team compared to your team, it is a bit of a night a night and day situation. With only one white right now, but the white has guards. You know, not not a bad pickup. The problem is he has no damage output apart from his like pretty decent bench, mm. and his his flesh golems and his werewolves are comparatively due to that that death in the agile RG, uh, werewolf the game week or two ago relatively yeah, he, he is as a necro player with only four blocks in this at this uh, level can be quite hurtful definitely definitely uh, chaos dwarfs because he didn't pick up anything during that admin win so we won't cover them 
We will cover the Kemri team. They picked up, I believe, one or two. Let me just look at the Rebelbot.net thing. Yeah, they picked up a single level up. But it's on a good piece. It's on the Tomb Guardian. And now, they have an entire complement of of guard on all of their Tomb Guardians. How, how terrifying is this team to you? Really terrifying at the moment. Their, their damage output is amazing. They have so much might yeah. blow, they have so much guard, and they have so much dirty player. It's going to be pure hell trying to, to pick off any of the TGs. Due to they will probably he will probably probably pair them, and going up against two of them is gonna take half my team just to get enough support to get a block in, a two die block in. Yeah, definitely. My my advice is hope that wolf that has block levels up fast enough to get mighty blow and then might have a chance. Yeah, exactly. Or strength up uh, white or something like that. That could also help. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I took out one of those two guardians in my game, but it, it died into regen, which is very unfortunate for the league because it was also a good one, I believe. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a terrifying team. It's a good pickup, even if it's just one skill on a, on a piece. Mm. Now now that team is just... If he pairs his, his two guardians right, they're just kind of unbeatable. Yeah. The the only thing that might might be the the little I don't know Issue. the margin of error yeah. is that it's only one of them who has block at the moment. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they've all had block as well, that would be really really terrified. At at this point, they can be one died and uphilled, but then again, that's always a risk in case you skull out and yeah. they can just take you out the church. Okay, so we have now uh, T Cold's team, the Norse team. Yep. They similarly just had two two skills. They have a tackle on linesman, which on a team that has no tackle right now, a, a decent pickup. I'm kind of excited about this just because I think mm -hmm. that it adds a lot of utility, even if it's not going to be your killiest piece. Um, but the more it's important. It's really interesting against some of the more uh, dodgy. Yeah, yeah, when he plays sure. me, and when he plays um, the High Elves, or the Pro Elves, then that, that piece can be a real good utility piece. But of course, yeah. I think I think the, the real important thing is that Yeti is now Claw Mighty Blow. Uh, mm. It's taken him a while to get that Yeti like online, because Yetis are notoriously useless until they actually get the Mighty Blow. <laughs> but now this piece will absolutely just be a, a complete havoc. Upon mm. the league. Definitely. Uh, T. Cole is also in the privileged position to be able to play Elf Ball with his bizarre Agi Up Norse team. Uh, the only issue for T. Cold, I think, right now is that he's 1800 TV, which, of course, considering how good his team is, you don't, you don't, he doesn't really care about that. He no. Does, that's whatever. But um, considering how fragile Norse are, some teams will Thanks. relish having the inducements. Yeah, one one game with enough mighty blow and some unlucky rolls can end up with losing half the team. So just like you say, they are fragile. It looks really, really promising his team. Yeah, absolutely. And this, but, this is why I definitely like peg him to have a solid season from here on in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we now move quickly on to Sarian's team. So Sarian just picked up Russell on a move busted kick lineman there's not much to say <laughs> um we've been saying it's uh game week in game week out well done yasarin for not like canning this team when it was garbage at the beginning of the season or before the season's beginning rather he really stuck out during the um he really stuck out for a while during open invitational to make this team good and mm. without commenting further on it well done for, for turning yeah. this team into something we can't talk about Helgen's team, unfortunately, because, you know, the admin lost me because mm. he picked up an SPP. Um, just, a, just a solid... We've always said this is the most solid of the Nurgle teams, but we will talk about the High Elves because they did pick up one or two pieces while also losing uh, some players for the next game week. I think the 
High Elves, what they picked up this week were the guard on one of the on the, the guard on the linesman that's now MNG mm. levels, which for a team like the High Elves who really need guards because they are like a, a bashy ish team in in terms of like comparatively to other High Elf teams. Yeah, the guard, the guard they're Elves Elf go. Yeah. Um, he's also got a Niggle Lodge Linesman who's five movement. And all I can say is Gunnerside needs to get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, he might be Blodge, but he's slow as a Chaos Warrior. And also, you know, you just give him pretty mighty blow when he gets hit. So, yeah. his team hasn't changed too much, but the guard is, I think, a big pickup. And Definitely. Still a terrifying team, hasn't lost too much. Uh, my team picked up things. I, I always hate talking about my teams a recap because it's like <laughs> what, how I'm not gonna like toot my own horn constantly. All I'll say is I've got the troll back, so after Masterful killed it, this one is now ready to be rebuilt into something better. I now have a blodge thrower, which is always gonna be scary for teams that either have no tackle or just in general because you can't always hit something like this with tackle. Um, it's it's really coming along, and we have another two-edged goblin. So I have now have less and less chaff. I, I, I have more goblins that have a use and can dodge through things on two pluses. Yeah. And I do actually have pieces that I'm happy to be hit. Uh, the Eternal Warrior of Underworld. But a, a good team, I'd like to say. <laughs> the best team. <laughs> the best of teams. Uh, they, they are hard to, to face. Not maybe... You have some damage output, definitely. But all those... Two heads. The two make heads it are really, really tough. Yeah, the, the goblins are usually like an unsung hero of the team. A lot of people really look down on goblins, but the two heads by themselves make underworld goblins like worth just worth it. In, yeah. In addition to the fact that I have rolled wrestle, and as, as we saw, wrestle even on uphill die can just be really scary. Mm. Um, can get the job done. It, like it's 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 a very low percentage chance of turning over. Uh, I think it's like 70% chance of turning over at that point. And even against Blodge, it's okay-ish. It's, it's still it's low, but it's okay-ish to get someone down. Um, mm. I'm, I'm happy with, with doubles. Um, next we have Bungieman's team. And we're just going to look over Bungieman's team. Because although I don't think he got any SPP level ups. Um, SPP or level ups, that is. Mm. He's got a new tree. You know, his team's looking once again like it's actually like a team rather than just <laughs> six halflings on a pitch. I'm, I'm glad he managed to, to stick out that game and lose only 1-0, which in many ways is like winning 5-0 for halflings. Uh -huh. And now he even has the money to go buy a bench, so, well, congratulations, Bungieman. You can be a proper halfling team again. <laughs> Next two teams we can't cover because it's Plovac and Wheelie who play later today, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, good luck to the both of those. The Dark Elf team, though, the Dark Elf team who just mauled those halflings finally picked up a, a few good new skills. Uh, I think they had three level ups, and from the looks of this, this team is actually looking juicier and juicier. So the Blodge. Let's uh, to Saint uh Once again, I, I'm a horrible like French speaker. <laughs> I, in I once did a, a part in a play where I had to do like French for a bit, and it was just everyone was like, "Did you do Russian in 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 the, in school?" And I was like, "No." He said, "French sounds Russian." I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> I don't. I won't have this. But yeah, I mean, so Toussaint got his tackle which is good he needs tackle as a utility mm -hmm. um Jacques Roux got move up so now he has a blodge mighty blow move up piece fantastic for one turning even this is a, a piece that can do everything but also just being a piece that can hit retreat back behind uh, cover or you know, mm -hmm. bodies fantastic pickup for him and Louis Saint Just also got wrestle which is pretty pretty good he he needed things to sack really this is what he needed it's either more blodge or things to sack and with the with the the tackle and the wrestle 
Team's looking good. The only thing I would say is the Witch Shelf is looking very, very naked. We yeah. need that. We need something to change there. Um, I haven't noticed. I didn't notice that he had picked leader on a double mm. Robespierre linesman. Um, I, I, okay. I mean, it is now he has three rerolls, but the, the only thing I'm saying is the runner is probably a better option for that because it's normal. That that double you picked on the linesman could have gone towards guard. Would you agree, or do you yeah. think that leader is a better? Yeah, I, th I think it, it would be more suited on uh, on the runner. Just like you say, it's it's a natural there uh, with no guards on the team. Definitely, I would definitely gone for a guard there. Yeah, I'm not sure how I managed to like go a recap or two without noticing that. Maybe it, maybe it is new. Um, no, he's had it for a game or two, so it must have been like last game week where I didn't have someone like reminding me. Mm. Oh, he has he has leader. What's that about? I just sort of glazed over it and went, oh, okay, sure. Um, but yeah, the, the lead is a bit weird. We would have picked guard, but fair enough. And the assassin still exists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I yeah, no. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I guess he could vanity pass and then try for multi-block. And if he gets multi-block, then he might actually have a use against, like, T-Cold Norse. Yeah, um, definitely. Otherwise, you know, whatever. And for our last team, we have GFI Joe's Nurgle team. And two of his rotters died. He re-bought them, though. He, we now have a new GFI Joe. <laughs> uh, GFI Joe had a... I guess it was third player and block, so... He, Kind of needed to be fired anyway because that, that's just too much. So death was sort oh. of a natural, a natural end for him. Natural selection. Yeah, a hundred percent. And he's also picked up some skills elsewhere. One of the Nurgle warriors now has guard. That's really important for the team. This yeah. team is starting to, and also one of the other Nurgle warriors got blocked. So this team is looking a lot like um, it's developing the same way that Helgen's team is looking right now. So we have two real up and coming Nurgle teams in the division, which does that terrify you immensely? Cause it terrifies me immensely. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I think I played Helgen, so he doesn't terrify me that much anymore. <laughs> yeah. He left his mark on me. Uh, um, I would prefer to face GFI Joe sooner rather than later. Before he starts to pick up too many skills, yeah. Uh, because it, I always have some difficulties going up against teams which have four-ish uh, strength four. Kind of slows me down quite heavily. Yeah. Especially when it comes to Nargle, we have the Beast of Nargle as well. That's efficiently five uh, strength four or more. Can cage me in quite fast. It can get ugly quite fast. Yeah, it really can. It's just like they can base all men's, and, and because I'm a team with Stunty, although I now have a lot of two heads, it can still be really ugly. Mm. Um, uh, Mike, I play him week six. I think you play him much later, unfortunately. He's at the top always. Let's see. Yeah, you play him game week 12, so you have him, like, second to last game. Whoopsie. <laughs> Let's hope you get that mighty blow party on the wall, huh? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that that is... Those are the teams right now, as they stand. And we can now go on to our predictions. We'll do this a bit quick fire. Um, yep. Just because it's getting late and I want to go to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll start off with GFI Joe versus uh, Gunside, which is uh, the Nurgle versus the High Elves. We always say that Nurgle have a, a decent match against Elves due to the Beast of Nurgle, due to that disturbing presence, but it, I would still say the amount of amazing players on the High Elf team makes me think this could probably be a 2-1 victory to the High Elves. Yeah, if he can only stay out of the, the zones, the, the minus pass zones, I think he can easily roll around. Yeah, he's fast enough, and um, yeah. Disturbing Presence is kind of like, he, you have to play it incredibly well um, to mm. make it really work for you. And if, you, if you're too spread out, then that in itself is a problem. If you're giving like, yeah. okay, well, I'll have, I'll have two Disturbing Players in, in an area, 
um, to cover like the most amount of space, it, you can still just be like, okay, well, I'm not utilizing my guard advantage, I'm not utilizing my strength advantage, and that kind of thing. So mm. it will be hard, even for a noble team that's developing, because that high elf team for me is just getting so much better. Yeah. The next game yeah, we have is. Uh, so, sorry, do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, they're on a roll now. They got the win in the back as well, so I think they're gonna gonna take this to the elves. Yeah, yeah, I I, I can't put it past it. And Gunnar's doing incredibly well this season. Uh, mm. we, I said we said we weren't gonna look at the leaderboards, but he has three wins in the season. Yeah. Um, so great work, Gunnar. Next game is me. That's my underworld versus uh, Helgen's Nurgle. So mm -hmm. not another Nurgle game. Uh, to just to say, when we played in first, you know, in our first seasons, I actually played him because he was in my division, and uh, I won that one nil. But now his team looks a lot better. I'm not so confident. I think the lack of tackle is gonna hurt him. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Nurgle never really get tackle that easy. They usually have so many skills they have to get before they can get tackle. Mm -hmm. And I think he just has his mighty blow piling on. Or Pestigore like online. He doesn't have it fully fully outfitted. Which against no. goblins, you know he can still get three dies and goblins, but he, now I have a carrier even, I could think I have a, a few tools to really frustrate him. Mm. In addition to being able to give it as good as I can get it with my own claw mighty blow. And also in terms of inducements this week I can get Glart as well. So I can get another eight root an eight armor, four strength claw block juggernaut piece in the line um so yeah i, I don't want to know i can't really predict my own games I, I i would say i don't know could it be a 2-1 loss to me or i just get like cads but i'm gonna hold out hope and say i'll, I'll beat helgen i think yeah I, uh, I think actually that you have a decent shot at taking down helgen yeah Especially yeah. if it would, yeah, he can get the three dice, but with all your two-headed goblins, you you can run around him till he heads spins off, pretty much. And also the wrestle for uh, yeah. more uphill die bullshit play. So you you won't uh, mm, estimate your your game, but I will do it, and I'll say two one to you. Thank you very much. That means you're going to get uh, you're going to get the, uh, uh, the 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 best treatment I can possibly give you when we come to your game in, in, at the end of this. <laughs> uh, the next game we have is uh, Halflings versus Skaven, and uh, pfft, yeah, no, Halflings aren't going to win this. I, I keep saying no. how much I appreciate Bungie Man's spirit, but this uh, th this is Skaven. You have uh, you don't have much Mighty Blow. You just have the Rat Ogre. Which is an unreliable piece in terms of removals, but you do have mm. three guard runners on the pitch. Yeah, three, it's three, it's three, one, three, nil. The, the four, the four edge, I think, on the halfling team is enough to like score you your throw teammate. But mm. I just don't see no. halflings getting past this game. It's not like a game where it's like, oh, you can do the dirty against something like Norse or something like Chorfs. For, for this, it's like. Uh, no, nothing always gets his will somehow. It never tells us in beforehand. But if nothing goes completely awry, there shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I would say so. Your Sarian will take this. Definitely. Um, next game we have is is Lizardman. That's Plovax Lizardman versus Decold uh, Norse. The Lizardman team is is looking pretty decent, but it's like uh, solid for fifteen hundred while. T Cold's team is an insane 1800 Norse team. There are inducements yeah. in the bag, therefore, for the Lizardman team. Uh, I didn't do the maths exactly. I think it's. Yeah, it's 200. You'll get 200 or so in inducements for the Lizardman team. Um, it's not going to be enough. Which, you know, it's always a lizard and then you can pick up with a. Uh, with a skink. And that kind of thing. But I would but say. But the Norse has a couple of. Because they, they can take uh, apart the Sauruses. They have the Claw Mighty Blow, they have the Claw yeah. Piling On. I, I can't really say anything, but T Cold has the, the potential to just outcast Plovax massively. 
Yeah. Uh, and for that reason, I'll say it's looking a lot like a 1 0 for the. It's like yeah. a 1 0 or a 2 1 for the Norse. Yeah, they are the gold win. Nothing yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, next game is going to be Pro Elves versus Kemri. We, that Kemri team is scary, and Masterful was a really good coach. He's had a pretty bad season after the first uh, game week. First game week he won, that everything else has been a loss. He has had the sort of the, his fair share of bad luck. However, I am a big Pro Elf fan. I love Pro Elves, and I think that the removal potential that the Kemri have doesn't match the fact that this Pro Elf team has the edge up. 8 movement, blodge catcher. That, that that piece by itself can do so much to this Kemri team. I wouldn't be True. surprised if there was like a 2-1 or 3-1 victory. Especially considering I think the Pro Elves can squeeze a wizard through their inducements. Uh, I think they should be able to. Let me just look at the team briefly. Yeah, when they get back their catcher It'll add about 200 in addition to the linesman. So they'll be back up to about 1,500. Mm. Um, but where are Yeah, so roughly 200. Yeah. So yeah, a wizard, they're going to get a wizard. They could get a wizard, they could get a bribe, they can get quite a few things. Um, yeah. So I, I think... I, I would say uh, it would be like one of those cases where the wizard just allows it to win 2-1 to the pro elves. Yeah. Well placed wizard will do the trick in this yeah, case. Absolutely. We now have the Dark Elf team versus the Chorves. The Chorves also a solid, solid contender for promotion, or well not promotion, uh, playoff spots. Their mm. team is looking very strong. They have that insane kill piece. The ball centaur that they have that has movement up and strength up is just unbeatable. This team I really, really hate facing them. <laughs> <laughs> this team has nothing to worry about, and what what the, the Dark Elf team has that's pretty good is they have a bench, they have bodies and numbers, but they don't have a good sort of... Yeah, spread but when they go, get caught up with the chores, they're going down heavily. Absolutely. Um, obviously, elves can do elf things, but the fact is, is that they don't have the Witch Elf on nine. They're no. still carrying around the assassin, which at best might like frag a, a hobgoblin or two. Uh, Blodge doesn't do many things, but they don't even have things like sidestep on that team, because this is like a two or three seasonal team going up against a, a miners team that it's still or a ramp up team. I think I think the these dark elves are a ramp up even. Mm. Uh, they only played nine games compared to something like twenty games. 31 games for the, the Chorfs, which is strange that he's in our division. <laughs> uh, but for that reason... But, but it, it's quite an easy tactics plan for Rift Cannon here. Just pile on with Chorfs against the, the Dark Elves and make them roll the dice. Absolutely. Make them roll the dice. Yeah, and, uh, and they will take they will pretty much kill themselves. The, the worst the case scenario for, for um, Rift Cannon is the Dark Elves succeed all their dice and it's fine for them and they can mm. maybe win a 2-1 or something like that or draw 1-1 one, one. but I would say that my first thought is it's going to be one of those 2 nil affairs where the Chorves get to be in offense first they'll cast the absolute living daylight start the Dark Elves, the Dark Elves start their drive with about 7 players, 8 players and mm. then they just don't get around them enough and then they just stall out and then ball drops down on the floor in turn 13 14 hobgoblin gets up the pitch and scores i i think it's 2 nil, probably to ref cannon yeah i agree and the last game is of course necro mirror match you versus mattia <laughs> this is obviously going to be a 16 nil victory for the mightiest <laughs> the mightiest legion of dead metal uh and uh, but no i i i in all seriousness i do would and not just because you're here, obviously, helping out the recap. I would probably tip your team to be the favorite for this. Uh, although it's a similar TV, as we've said, this, the fact is your flesh golem is amazing. Your whites have much more to them than his white singular. You have the edge werewolf. 
the, the, the kind of thing that Mattia has over you is just the bench. All of his positionals yeah. and all of his team is, is healthy, by all means. But the problem is, is that he doesn't have two amazing werewolves. Um, he doesn't have strong flesh golems, and he's, he, and he's had one white. He actually has more SPP and more development really on his zombies, which is never a good thing for Necromantic. Now, getting too bloated there is especially at this point. Because I, w I would actually try to, to limit... SP I would keep the kicker uh, that I would do. I think I would recycle the other three just to decrease the TV and try to gain some inducements instead. I definitely think removing the, the kick guy, not the kick guy, the tackle guy is a good idea. Because no. although he's he, although he's your, your only tackle, he's also for movement. It doesn't really matter. No. Um, too much. I I think he needs those dirty players because it's his only sort of damage output that he possibly has. But mm. the problem is, is that in this matchup versus you, the damage potential isn't as good because you have regen, um, you have. A bunch of like you have nine armor thick skull and these things it's either gonna be the zombies or the flesh that get hit the werewolves and the white and all that should be kind of protected probably yeah. in, in the ideal in the ideal scenario um and even kind of hard to get down in the, in the case of your edge up move up guy mm. so what he has is good against certain teams against elves this team can really kind of perform above its weight but against your yeah. team, it will struggle, and that is why I would say very likely to be a 2 1 or a 2 0 to uh, your team. Thank you. Uh, but with that, we now finish all of our predictions for game week four. And uh, I can tell you just a, a slight promotional PR thing. Okay. I'll be, uh, we'll be streaming that game tomorrow night. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. With the uh, with the REBBL logo spinning around as well. Uh, actually, joined the digital crew now as well. Yeah, I, I stream, but I don't have the special spinny logo. I really should get it because I should also add it to these recaps. So you know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's easy to get. I'm just lazy. I haven't ever got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So the game will be streamed tomorrow, as you say. Um, yep. Fantastic. But at the end of the day, thanks for very much for coming along. I really appreciate you helping me out in this. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you for you. having me. It was a true pleasure to join you. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be a fairly concise one as well. Actually, oh, no. <laughs> it looked <laughs> concise. It was. I looked at it when we were like almost at the end. It was like, oh, my, we're 33 minutes or so. And now it's 42. Whoops. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I guess that's what happens. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. I hope everyone has a good game week for game week four. Uh, the best of luck to everyone, and we will see you for the next recap next week. I'm Chuck Man Milk signing off. Take care, everyone.